Hey guys, welcome to our movie review. We did a double header where we saw uh, The Turning and The Gentleman. Uh, and I'll tell you right away, The Turning was a piece of shit. And this film, The Gentleman, was a pleasant surprise. I really enjoyed it. Um, now, I gotta say up front, I haven't seen a lot of Guy Ritchie films. If you can name some for me, Alex. Uh, Snatch. Good one. Haven't seen it. Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Good haven't one. seen it. Uh, Aladdin. Really? He did Aladdin. He did I that. Like he did that King Arthur movie. Piece of shit. So he's got some good ones, and he's got some really bad ones. Yeah. So um, I thought that the gentleman was extremely uh, clever, entertaining. Uh, I will admit, though, it was a little bit of a slow uh, build. Mm -hmm. Um. And I was wondering, sort of, is this it? There's a lot of style. Where's the substance? It starts to come into play later. Mm -hmm. We do eventually get the substance. Yeah. Um, and, and we get it in a clever way. And uh, I really like the way it was executed and filmed. Definitely has its own sense of style. Like this guy, Richie character, uh, he's a little full of himself a little bit. I mean, there's Guy Ritchie all over. Uh, I mean, the credits is like Guy Ritchie. Oh, produced, Guy Ritchie. Produced by. Guy Ritchie. Written by. Guy Ritchie. And then it's like put right next to his head. It's like Guy Ritchie. It's like you could have combined all this written, directed by Guy Ritchie. But no, he, ma he makes to sure that he's got like 17 <laughs> credits in the film. Okay, well, you know what? You did a good job. Really enjoyed it. Uh, here's why I liked it so much. The characters. That's yeah. yeah was... Every single like character, like n not only are they interesting, but they are introduced in interesting ways. I really like that. What mm -hmm. did y'all think? I think this is a. a By the way, I I, I I I I was in a car explosion. Yeah, yeah that's that's, <laughs> that's why happened. that's like that. <laughs> uh, it feels on. like early Guy Ritchie stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it that's feels I mean. a lot. I don't think that this movie is as good as Snatch, mm -hmm. but I Nothing think that it reminds me. I'm gonna watch Snatch you right away. Yeah, because I, I really like it. Some really one. interesting characters, and like this one, like Hugh Grant was incredible as the the sniveling, weaselly private investigator yeah. that kind of acts as like the <laughs> yeah the narrator for this. Can you give me a plot, little little synopsis? I'm, I'm it's a Guy Ritchie plot. That. There's 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 so mob there's, people, yeah. and then there's different groups of them, and they're constantly like you're meandering through this weird plot from different points of view, and they're trying to get to the common goal. And it's almost impossible like to spoil something in a Guy Ritchie film because there's too many goddamn things that happen, mm -hmm. and not any one of them is super important, mm -hmm. other than some of the some twists and piece, turns, right? Pieces, you yeah. So it's just it based around drugs. Uh, there's like different mob groups that control different drugs and the interactions of those groups. And they want to take over. And they want to take over each yeah. other's territory. And then, they, you know, he Guy Ritchie's it up with, like, crazy characters throughout. Colin and Farrell. Crazy antics. Oh, yeah. Well. Colin Farrell did an incredible job. The The woman who played uh, Matthew McConaughey's wife did an incredible job. Matthew yep. McConaughey was Matthew McConaughey. So, like, all of those Charlie. characters yeah. were, were real interesting. And it's not like the film was filled with action. There's not even a car explosion, like, for me to be wearing nope. this. Uh, it's... <laughs> There's not Kinda like a won. massive gun battle. There's not. Uh, there's also, uh, you know, there is a, a, a lot of fighting. But honestly, I think the fighting wasn't filmed too well. Uh, the camera was zoomed in a mm -hmm. little too much, a little too shaky cam. Was a little annoyed by that. Later on, we get a little cleaner stuff, and I appreciated that. But, um, you know, you know that, that trailer scene where you see that, that Asian guy in the beginning, he's a part of the, the Chinese mafia mm -hmm. or the, the triads, and he's firing an Uzi, and he's like, ah! that, that is That's literally, that's the, that's the thing. That's, it's, yeah, it's that's all of the action of the whole film. the action yeah. <laughs> the whole intro. Um, yeah, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It, it's as long as you intelligent story, dialogue, yeah. mm -hmm. very interesting dialogue. Matthew McConaughey at his best, his most cool. It's like, yeah, this is the Matthew that I know and love, and I like seeing the him lion. do his thing. Uh, yeah, the lion versus the dragon because this new, you know, this Chinese gang wants to take over the territory mm -hmm. of obviously uh, Matthew's character. Just, you know. Cool ass shit, monster. Cool shit, you know, King of the Hill type stuff. Really liked it. Yeah, yeah, I think it was really good. It was very competent. 
Uh, I think it dragged a little bit in the center. I think it took... They set up all the characters, and they did a wonderful job introducing all of them. And then there's, like, this middle part. And then we get to, like, the real meat of the story where stuff starts to happen really quickly. But there's probably 15, 20 minutes where it just sags. Yeah. And I don't remember sitting through either Lock, Stock, or, or Snatch and just feeling like, all right, get to the point. And this I one I definitely bits did. bits and pieces of Lock, Stock, yeah. and, and I really enjoyed that as well. But you're right. Uh, there, there are... Uh, bits and pieces here but then when it ramps up there it's in that very, third very act it is very good and you're locked in and you're like okay everything that was in there uh was factored in here mm. towards the end and and was an interesting watch so great performances well filmed not a ton of action but it didn't matter because there was a mm. bunch of great dialogue I don't know. And so Guy Ritchie, I guess he's from the United Kingdom. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So he's like, I don't know. Uh, there's a very, you know, heavy, intelligent dialogue. Kind of reminds me of like a Quentin Tarantino. Is Guy Ritchie sort of like the UK version of Quentin Tarantino? I guess. I mean, they both have like, you can watch one of their movies. And, and if you're familiar with them, you're like, know. this is a Guy Ritchie movie. <laughs> okay. So interesting. Guys, uh, we really enjoyed this one. Uh, let's make it short. Let's go ahead and give this thing a, a rating. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give this an eight. Uh, I love the score. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Great music. Uh, the All the actors did a great job. Pop, pop, I, pop, pop, pop. What up, pop, pop. It reminded me of uh, Quit Mash, you know, because oh, they do God, a rap Jack song Jack. in this one. Look at your uh, nose. <laughs> look at your nose. Whoa, quit Mash. <laughs> Just great. I liked it. I actually was, you know, you know, jamming around to that song. Even though it's like a crappy song, it's supposed to be kind of it's cheesy. It's a little funny. Mm-hmm. Stupid. A little tongue in cheek but i liked it it's the it's colin farrell's a fantastic interesting character in this called the coach and you know he's he's, great he's He's great and then there's a group of kids that you know it seems like you know in the uk i don't know why i have this feeling like there's no tough kids and gangs in the uk no there is yeah just the way they talk is just funny to me but no they'll kick your fucking ass (laughs) in a and talk shit while they're doing anyway Mm -hmm. so sorry joe Great acting. Yeah. All of them did amazing. I love the way uh, Hugh did his recap of the whole story. Like, he's narrating mm. every, everything. The story was great. There was a little bit of drag, but eight for me. Mm. Totally worth it. Uh, I think I'm also... See, I was stuck between a seven and an eight, but I think that... I know you're going with a seven. Snatch, um, snatch is like above yeah. It, so, so but well, the, the watch it snatch. After. Give me a rating for snatch. Snatch is like a nine. Yeah. Snatch yeah. is very good. Okay. I mean, snatch. If if you're talking about like his movies, like nine or ten, like those are the ones that if I'm thinking of like a British gangster movie, snatch is at the top of the list. Okay. So even it's b- above this one. Brand yeah. Oh, for sure. Ass. For sure. Above oh, this one. Um. But I think that the characters were wonderful. I think there's some really really funny bits of dialogue. Um, you know, they talk about like there's some fuckery about and like there's there's a lot of really fun quotes that come from these little side characters. Mm-hmm. And I think the story was pretty good. It meandered a little bit, which is probably why I take a couple points off. Um, there was some times where it felt like it was Guy Ritchie for Guy Ritchie's sake, where he's it's like a super fan trying to make a movie as if they were Guy Ritchie. They're like, what would he do? <laughs> and so it was a little over the top, but yeah. it was still still really well done. So I am going to go with an eight. OK. Uh, well, I've not seen, you know, uh, Snatch, so it's, I, I'm pretty sure y'all are using your ratings to compare to Snatch. Yeah, we But are. <laughs> for me, like, I, I don't see why I wouldn't give it, you know, I'm in 8-9 territory, and I think, I, 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 I think 8 as well, because, the, like you said, there was a little bit of pacing issues, mm-hmm. there could have used a little more action, though it didn't need it. Um, but it did have a little bit of a slow start, um, but it did come together in a very satisfying way. So I don't, like I'm trying to find a reason not to give it a nine. Hey, if you enjoyed it, I just, the thing is like, we, I know I'm sure the, with better perspective, I'll be like, no, you snatch yeah, the, 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 the bar, the bar is actually pretty high for some of his like really good, but oh, like yeah, gangster films. So, okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Choices. I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go with an eight. And uh, mainly because there was a lot of fascinating characters, but there was also a few ones that, you know, didn't really have much to do and, and you know, weren't really for me. But goddamn, the ones that were interesting are just fascinating to watch. And it's like, um, 
top of their game type of stuff, and I really enjoyed it. So, oh, yeah. yeah, eight out of ten. Thank you guys uh, so much. Make that quick, and we'll go into the spoiler section and discuss a little bit of uh, what happened in the film. Yeah, we'll try to. Uh, we'll yeah. try to because there's lots. All right, so see you guys uh, there in the spoiler section. If not, I'll see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Okay, spoiler section. Guys, what what up? What up? Um, so basically, Hugh is the PI, and he has all the information. He goes up to Charlie. He's working. Charlie's working with uh, Matthew McConaughey. He's mm-hmm. his number two. Right-hand man. Yeah, and Matthew McConaughey wants out of the business, so he's just trying to sell it. And what's interesting is that he's got a, a weed business in the United mm-hmm. Kingdom where he, he's like, how do you have such a massive – Weed business in a country where people are allowed to go anywhere and just do anything, and and how do you, you would keep need this a, a secret? need a lot of acres, a lot of mm-hmm. like, uh-huh. so how can he you works go unnoticed. With the lords, and yes. that's kind of fun. Yeah, he works with like the old the old nobles who have all this land, but maybe don't have the income that they you know used to have, and so he's like, look, I'll pay you a ton of money. I'm gonna dig under your your you know uh, make this grow house. Your, yeah, your castles, Super and they just elaborate. have these underground things, and so um, I think it was kind of a, a cle- it was like a clever clever thing to do. Um, he's looking to sell to this. The, I think the weakest character. I actually Matthew. did not like. Matthew. Yeah, the, I think his name's Matthew. He's the, uh, the the one that's trying to buy the business from Matthew McConaughey. For I think he was. Mil. I don't know well, if he, he's supposed to be a <coughs> fucking weasel. slimy weirdo. Weasel. Yeah, but it was it was it was like somebody was overacting a slimy weirdo. It was so it was like so beyond yeah. like it was so above it. what it was. Oh, Every oh, other character yeah. was so spot on that oh. he felt out of place. All right. Yeah. That's okay. basically how it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of who I was referring to. And, and there's some characters that I love and some characters I didn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, his wife, uh, you know, w- you could tell he really loves his wife. But, um, you know, was she on that same level? I'm not really sure. Um, she, didn't have, she didn't really get she enough. She didn't get enough. I, and I think she could have done a little bit. Like. She did have good scenes. I'm not saying that. But everybody had excellent scenes. And mm-hmm. I was hoping that she would get excellent scenes. Uh, anyways, so uh, he's trying to sell his billis business. Uh, by the way, weed is going legal in the UK, and so the business is going to be earning even more money, potentially billions, he says. Mm. But he just he just wants to retire, hang out with his wife, and be done with it. Mm-hmm. So the guy comes in, values it, all right, $400 million, And he's like, okay, cool. So let's uh, you know take some time to think about it, and we'll do that. Well, while he's thinking about it, it turns out, and they reveal this at the end, that that little slimy asshole, came up with a plan in order to devalue his current you know uh, assessment of it and he uses a overly ambitious and aggressive chinese uh gangster who triad triad i don't know if triad or not but dry eyes. Was his name oh, is dry, dry eyes. eyes uh <laughs> well he was under uh you know george Lord, or, yeah, Lord, Lord George, George. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's trying to gain power and stuff. And so he attempts to go behind George's back in order to buy the business. And no, that doesn't work out. His number's too low, even though the, with the amount of presses he did on that calculator, that's more than a billion. That's like a Google. Well, he was that. using minus a couple times. All right. <laughs> Anyways, right. It's almost an insulting offer, um, you know, and that was an excellent scene because it plays out in their head. This is what he yeah. would have done mm-hmm. if he's like the old lion. But then even what he does do is he's still like, That's badass. not what happened. I was there. He's like, okay, okay. All I was right, just right. trying to liven up the story. We <laughs> have a narrator that's fun. Yeah. And, and that makes some good scenes and some good twists here and there. Um, so get the fuck out of here, you know, and, uh, but then later on, one of his businesses gets hit and, uh, these are some creative characters cause you've got these track suited up guys and it was the same place that he took Matthew. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they didn't catch on to that, With which no was kind game. of annoying. Yeah. I was like, you took Matthew. He's the only one that knows. Yeah. The it's only outside of it's ever stupid yeah. as fuck. But he, I guess he kind of thought maybe it was the Chinese gangster that was, like, putting men on him and always well, they had no watching idea. him. Yeah, but maybe – but you, I'm just trying to come up with an excuse. Anyways, so they these guys go in there, and uh, this is a, another excellent scene where it's like, well, who the fuck are you? They're coming in with the weed, <laughs> yeah. and there's only one guy versus, like, eight, and you're like, oh, these guys are going to – 
kick his ass because he's an older dude. Uh, and then he's like, hey, Robbie, come over here. And then another guy comes and then another guy comes and another guy comes and another guy comes. And you're like, oh, man. He's like, you kids. have any more rabbits in that hole? <laughs> right. These these kids are going to get their ass yeah. beat. But then, you know, it cuts away. Some badass music. It cuts back <laughs> to them. Turns out those guys won. The tracksuited yeah, kids. beat their asses. They beat them the fuck up. And later on, as they're explaining, sorry, boss, you know, we lost your weed. They were actually pretty damn good fighters. <laughs> yeah. You know, I respect them for it. And it turns out that they were uh, sort of trained by the coach. Mm-hmm. And we got Colin Farrell's characters introduced so awesomely. There's a bunch of punk-ass kids come in, some, you know, eatery. Some and chip shop, yeah. Fucking making a rack. And he's like, hey, just... You know, back up, back up about two feet and, you know, shut your mouth and, and be respectful. And they're like, hey, hey, hey put it in his like, knife. What do you want to go, man? <laughs> beats the fuck out of him. And they're like, oh, shit, you're the coach. He's like, oh, fuck, that's the coach. And it turns Show out respect. that these guys were trained by the coach. Mm-hmm. Um, So, but he's like, fuck, you guys ripped off this very powerful, you know, man here in the UK who's running all this under weed, un- underground weed stuff. We're in trouble. So Colin actually says, look, I'm sorry my boys did this and I'll be indebted to you and then we can make things good. And uh, and that comes into play in the climax later on that he uses that to a to its great effect. Mm-hmm. And I love Colin and I love the guys. Uh, they also film rap videos and post it online. That was weird. Yeah. Well, uh, rap beat up videos and yeah, shit. Yeah, it was very They're, strange. Uh, fight porn is what it's called. That, that Trying stuff to clicks. happens. It's happened before. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So, anyways, um, just, you know, what else? Oh, uh, they basically pulled a black mirror. I don't know if you yeah, yeah, it was super weird. So, one of the big re- reveals is he, they the, the, the justification for Hugh Grant threatening this mob boss is if you do not give me 20 million pounds, I'm going to sh- give all of this stuff to pretty much the, the National Enquirer or whoever it is that's going to do all the runs, all the tabloids, and, you, you, and, and, and I'm going to ruin you. And so and what there, they, there's reason somebody wants to ruin you because you insulted this one guy who's head editor, of the National yeah. Enquirer, yeah. and he has it out for you. And so what they did is they gave him some Viagra and a bunch of drugs, and then they put him in a pig pen, and they forced him to have sex with a pig. You don't see and it, though. And videotaped it. You don't see it. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, I, I watched Black I was like, Mirror, wait, too. And I didn't like that episode Black either. Mirror. That's but, terrible But the one. whole way it's filmed is you think that, you know, the characters that we like, you know, Charlie Hunnam and, and Matthew McConaughey are in a bind. They're fucked. But it turns out the whole time they had everything under control. Yeah. And uh, they had plans and backup plans that they executed to uh, basically embarrass the National uh, uh, Enquirer person that he wouldn't do anything. And then all the evidence that the huge slimy guy has who wants $20 million or he's going to expose them. Uh, basically, they find all of his evidence in his mom's house and some mm-hmm. other guy's house and stuff. And uh, however, there is There's one loose. Twist. There is one loose end. Uh, at some point, uh, the lords, uh, you know, ask things from time to time from Matthew McConaughey's character. And one of the lords has, you know, a junkie daughter who went off into the projects and she's and they wanted her uh, him to rescue her. So he rescues her. But in the rescue, they accidentally knock over this one kid who they don't know anything about. Disneyland. Well, it turns out this kid was a part of the Russian mob or something. He's like the that. son of yeah. the, an mob old KGB guy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that is actually who is like, uh, you know, f- attempting to kill Matthew McConaughey's character. Because this whole film starts with, you know, Matthew like going to the pub, ordering a beer. He's cool as fuck. It's pickled egg and, and he's reading the paper, setting up a date with his wife. And then somebody comes up behind him. Pop and it cuts to his cup, blood everywhere. Like, and like what? I thought like, we were gonna see more of it. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to watch this film. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking forward to that. Yeah. And I know how it ends, but of course they play with that. And as mm-hmm. I'm going along, I'm like, you know what? He's gonna be either like pop, you know, or the bartender's that gonna do it. Yeah. But it turns out to be Charlie's mm-hmm. character who saved him. And, uh, you know, so basically they think that it was the slimy Matthew character who wanted to buy the business working with the Chinese mafia in order to make that happen. He comes in and he's he's like, all right, yeah, let's do the deal. But I have reevaluated stuff since you've been raided and that's a little risky. I'm going to deduct this and I'm going to deduct that. And the valuation 130, 120, you know, and I'll give you 100 right now cash, you know, to help you out. 
And by then, you know, Matthew has already figured all this stuff out. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right. And this is another great scene. Just really great interaction mm-hmm. scenes. He's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Matthew comes out. Uh, this, this not Matthew, but the other character. Uh, I don't know what that slimy Mike. character is. Mike. Oh, that's Matthew. That's his name. Right, Matthew, the slimy not character. Matthew, but Matthew. Matthew, Matthew yes. McConaughey's Mike. Goes into this <laughs> ice box, and then he comes out, and he realizes, oh, shit, these guys, I'm kind of alone, and, uh, you his know, I've been, dead. I've been, t- his goons are gone, he's been talking shit this whole time, and he's like, all right, you fucked with my business, and, I, you know, it's fine, you, you, I, it's not even really about the money. It's the fact that you fucked with my wife. Mm. You threatened my wife or sent, you know, the Chinese mafia to his wife. So he's like, here's what I want. I want you to give me a pound of flesh, and you're also going to pay me $275 million, all the heartache I had to go through. Uh, you have an hour to live uh, to do this because you're going to be freezing. And, uh, and then find a way to cut off a pound of flesh. <laughs> yeah, I don't care where it comes from. But one pound. Well, one pound. <laughs> so I thought that was fucking badass. Uh, so they get that, that all wrapped up, but they realize, oh, shit, it's not just them. It's also this loose end that we made, the Russian mafia, who is then you attacking. about them. Right. Who is then uh, going to attack and uh, go ahead and continue. There. Yeah, and then they get rescued by uh, the boys. Uh, the coach and the boys end up rescuing and <laughs> killing all the Russian mobsters. Um and everyone ends up, all the good guys end up living. In spectacular fashion, yes. they manage to capture Matthew McConaughey's character, uh, the lion, and he's in the car. He's fucked. He knows he's done, but the boys, who had already given them three favors and like, look, we're not gangsters, we're out of here, uh, gives them a fourth favor. And you're like, whoa, cool. They roll up and they fucking fire and, do, 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 and kill Kill the driver and the kidnapper, and uh, Matthew uh, gets out. He lives. Gets out. And, and he's he, still the king. And he gets laid. Yeah, and the movie his wife co- comes over, and he's like, uh, let's any have chance? sex. Any chance? And she just closes the door, any and you're chance? like, he gets laid. That, the movie ends that. with him getting laid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. Fucking awesome. Machismo. Badassery. Mobs. Fighting. Great dialogue. Definitely great acting. Watch. Fantastic characters. There's also another scene I don't want to forget to mention that I really enjoyed is that Matthew goes personally to the Chinese gangsters, uh, the oh, one in charge, yes. Lord George, because he thinks that George is the one that had to do with Messers. hitting him and mm-hmm. starting a war. And, you know, he comes in all nice at first, but it turns out that he had poisoned the tea and done all this other stuff. And, like, so the guy just start, <laughs> starts fucking throwing fucking up. And all he's over ready to fucking pop a cap in his ass, too. And he, he holds off and he's like, yeah. If I could get you here in your in your, in own, your kitchen, own kitchen, I can get you anywhere. Mm. <laughs> Damn. And he, and then that's when the you know Chinese uh, you know leader goes to the young upstart and he's like, "What the fuck are you doing? Fucking do this shit!" And it, oh, I forgot to say the young upstart does get his up and comings because this guy has been a fucking asshole and fucking with everybody. He is killed by Matthew McConaughey, and it shows him in that ice box that the guy has to give the money, and he's like, yeah, I don't know him. Dead. Now you're going to be dying if you don't fucking mm-hmm. give me money. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it was a flashback to the good old days of Guy Ritchie before Aladdin yep. and good, King Arthur. Another good yep. movie in January. You know what? Yeah. So so this is a good, you know, you can say nostalgia, and <laughs> and sometimes they, they reach back into that pocket and they can't pull they can't pull it back, but he does reach back. And it looks like it pulls yeah. it back, and that's great. I wish the same could have been done with Star Wars. Welcome back, Guy Ritchie. Of course, you're going to have to bring that up. <laughs> you want to talk well, about Fallout 76, too? <laughs> we, we didn't talk about that this video, either. Fallout. Well, Fallout. We just did now. Fallout! Go. <laughs> God damn it. All right, All right, it's right, over, guys. That's it. We'll it's see over. you on the next Angry Joe show. Click the links below. Support our Patreon. Uh, pick yourself up Buy some merch. Some merch and stuff, yeah. Or just watch the show. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.